For more reaction to Intel's earnings, let's bring in Jared Weisfeld, tech sector specialist at Jefferies. Jared, great to have you with us. Um, would it have been too much to expect raised uh, back half of the year guidance by more than what they already beat, given Pat Gelsinger's been on the job for a matter of months? Yeah, no, I think that's a great point, and it's exactly what Guy was talking about. If you sort of look at the full year raise, they raised by about 20 cents. But it's very misleading under the surface, because if you actually look at for Q3, they're guiding to a 4% tax rate. So it's actually a very low quality beat underneath the surface because they're benefiting from a very low tax rate, which is artificially boosting your EPS number. You know, that's something that IBM investors uh, can remember uh, all, all too well. But I think the, the bigger problem here and why shares are down is it's all about the second half gross margin trajectory, where the implied Q4 gross margins are really down or they're missing the street by about 200 basis points. So if you think about we're starting the year at 59% and exiting the year closer to 53%, Investors are all worried, already worried about incremental competition from AMD. This is only going to feed into that narrative in a pretty significant way. So what is the trajectory? I mean, what, what do you glean from this Intel quarter in, in terms of what this means for competitors? Do you, do you see that Intel remains weak and competitors are still eating their lunch? Unfortunately, it's just more questions than answers because the, the narrative is going to be how, do we, how should we think about pricing? AMD has an incredibly competitive product, especially on the server side with their new product, Milan, and they're gaining, um, they're gaining share at a, at a faster rate versus their prior generation. So when you have that kind of gross margin trajectory, you're only going to fear the worst in terms of what that means from a pricing standpoint. And then there are a different, um, you know, it's not just AMD because then you also have you have NVIDIA, which is gaining share as well from uh, a parallel compute standpoint, just in terms of the architecture of the data center. So, you know, there, there's a lot of challenges ahead. It was a very strong quarter. Data center beat, and that's the most important thing for the stock, to continue to have data center beat because it's their highest margin segment. But unfortunately, despite that data center upside in the quarter, the trajectory from a margin standpoint into the back half of the year is deteriorating. And, you know, as you think about what Gelsinger is doing to refocus this business, He's going to Foundry as their next growth driver. You know, he talks about having potential 100 plus Foundry customers that are potentially engaged. Uh, but the issue there is that that also could be dilutive to gross margins. Jared, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. What do you think about global foundries? What do you think about either strategic partnerships, M&A, uh, fast forwarding some of this move for Intel? What do you think uh, uh, the CEO is going to do? I mean, he's got he's got a large balance sheet. He talked about on the call. Um, obviously, no comment. Um, you know, he's willing to participate in general industry consolidation, and I think that's a theme that we're seeing occur across the board. And you're seeing you know, you've got healthy balance sheets across the board uh, with with within semis, right? You obviously have AMD in the process of uh, trying to acquire Xilinx. You have ADI trying to acquire Maxim. So I think he sees certainly what's going on around him and realizes that he's got. Uh, very large balance sheet, and obviously he's also has um, he has um, in federal government support. And you think about the Chips Act that's currently getting funded. There are a lot of avenues for him to go ahead and uh, and consolidate the industry longer term. How does this set up for AMD next week into their earnings release on the 27th? I mean, I would look at this and say, you know what, everything points to um, a really strong quarter. Lisa Sue's been crushing it. What does this mean for AMD in your opinion in earnings next week? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, you know, every fundamental data point continues to suggest that AMD is is gaining share. And based on our work, we think that they're gaining share at a, at a more accelerated rate as well. So uh, I think there are some there have been some questions. And I think this goes to what Gelsinger was talking about on the call in terms of supply constraints and uh, how to think about that in the second half of the year. He talked about that bottoming. You know, there was concern earlier in the year that Intel locked up a ton of substrate that would be uh, a problem for, for AMD. But then AMD three months ago got it up 50 percent for the year in terms of revenue growth. Right. Just huge numbers. Uh, and it's hard to imagine, given the momentum the business has uh, has been enjoying, that that momentum is not going to continue. So I have to imagine that Lisa Sue, the CEO, left some uh, some gas in the tank and. I think, you know, all, all, all signs are pointing to a data center acceleration similar in, into the second half, similar to what um, Gelsinger is talking about, and that should bode well for AMD. Jared, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jared Weisfeld of Jeffries. Dan, what do you think of Intel? 
Interesting. Uh, you know, your question to start off the segment, Mel, was, you know, new CEO, um, and then we hear, um, you know, low quality beat, right? And that's not what you want to hear, I don't think, right out of the gate. So to me, we also talked about, all right, it's cheap. I'd rather go towards Qualcomm in the mobile space, and you look at that is expected to grow earnings and sales next year 10%, trading about 16 times. Um, seems pretty reasonable to me. They report next week also. And then also Taiwan Semiconductor. I think the outlook that they have gave the stock did get knocked down. It was about a week and a half ago um, when they reported. It's still consolidating here. And I thought some of their um, commentary about the supply disruptions was probably a little more optimistic than what we're hearing out of Intel right here. So I prefer Qualcomm on value and then Taiwan Semi um, just as a breakout of this range with some bad news in the stock near term. Karen, it's interesting that Pat Gelsinger had every opportunity, every excuse to not give much guidance. But he really kicked it off when he when he sort of laid out the outlook for for the chip giant in terms of what he was going to spend on what and, and also giving guidance. And here he is giving more guidance that just ends up disappointing when he could have easily just said things are, are fluid still. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know if he felt like he had the ability to do that. I, I would try to do it as long as I could. I always think companies hurt themselves by being in the guidance business anyway. But it seemed like the stock was sort of priced for meh and he kind of delivered. Right. So I don't know if that means it should be re-rated at all. Probably not, given that there's so much, um, I don't know, acceleration and there's so much momentum elsewhere, even though it's priced significantly higher. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.